Is consciousness linked to quantum physics? Some physicists, like Roger Penrose, think so. And given that we don't know just exactly how the human brain works, it isn't totally crazy to think that maybe quantum physics plays a role in it. But, plot twist, a group of physicists have now argued that actually the human brain can't run on quantum physics. Well, that's new, so let's have a look at the paper. Physicists distinguish two different types of theories, quantum physics and classical physics that works without quantum effects. Classical physics is the world of Newton and Einstein, where objects have definite locations and velocities, and you can predict what they do. In quantum physics, that isn't so. Objects generally don't have all their properties definite. They can be in multiple states at once, they are subject to an inevitable uncertainty. And most importantly, in quantum physics, we can't predict what will happen. We can only predict the probabilities for what could happen. We might be able to say, for example, that a particle has a 50% probability to go right and a 50% probability to go left but we don't know what the particle did until we go and measure it. Many physicists, including Niels Bohr, the father of the Copenhagen interpretation, thought that this indeterministic element of quantum physics is where free will hides. That is our feeling that we have several different possible actions we could take, of which we then choose one. The idea is that this might be because these possible actions are in a quantum state and it's only our choice that transforms one of these many possibilities into one actuality. However, most physicists today think that there aren't really two separate regimes of physics, one quantum and one classical. Really, everything is quantum. It's just that for large objects that we encounter in daily life, the quantum effects become so small and subtle that we can't see them. It's much like we don't see the effects of Einstein's relativity, not because they're not there, they're just too small. The authors of the new paper now say that this can't be because humans can really only have free will if quantum effects truly go away. It's not enough that we just don't notice them. To be concrete, they don't argue so much about free will, but rather agency. That's the ability to make decisions internally without being strongly dependent on external input. This is because you could say that your phone makes decisions in some sense, for example, whether to send you a notification or not, but whether it does so or not is determined by your input. So your phone has little agency. For us to have agency, the authors argue, we must be able to simulate in some sense our environment and the results of different possible actions. This means we need to map this environment to our brain multiple times to consider all possibilities. However, there is an obstacle to this in quantum physics, which is the no-cloning theorem. This theorem says that you can't make a copy of an arbitrary quantum state unless you destroy the original. It's a mathematical property of quantum physics. There is no way around this. So, the authors say, if our environment has only quantum properties and the human brain has only quantum properties too, then humans can't make models of their environment. They don't have a world model, as the authors put it. Now, one might say, OK, but we don't need a particularly good model of the environment. Like if we try to decide whether to eat pizza or noodles, it's not like we need to have a model of exactly each atom in the pizza in our brain. Still, the authors say, if the pizza is really a quantum state, and if you want to make multiple, if only approximate models of the state, then the fidelity of your model degrades rapidly. This means basically that your model is bad it has little resemblance to the real thing. Then they conclude that this means that a quantum computer can't develop true agency. And more importantly, for us to exist, quantum physics needs to break down somehow. What are we to make of this? Well, it's to my knowledge a genuinely new argument about quantum physics and consciousness, which is why I think it's interesting. That said, I'm highly dubious about their claim that the no-cloning theorem would forbid us from making even approximately correct models of our environment. 
This is why I give this paper 6 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. I have a feeling that someone's going to prove them wrong in the near future. But even so, it might become a fruitful line of thought. At the very least, I can now use this paper to blame all my bad decisions on quantum physics. Quantum mechanics, algorithms, statistics sounds scary, but don't let yourself be intimidated. Have a look at the courses on Brilliant because I found them to be great at breaking down complex ideas into interactive lessons that anyone can follow. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.